From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Dave Sherman, Mr. Dollar, city attorney. Oh, yes, I've been trying to reach you, Mr. Sherman. Yes, so my office tells me. It's the uh, Ed Blake case, I suppose. That's right. Well, I've already told my secretary to make all the records available. It's not the records I'm mainly interested in, Mr. Sherman. I want to talk to you personally. Oh, why? Because I've been informed that you're able to furnish an alibi for my number one suspect. Marty Blake, huh? That's right. Who informed you, Mr. Dollar? Marty Blake. Oh, the lovely widow herself. Right. Well, I guess we'd better have a talk. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yes, if you're dead set on lighting a fuse in this town, I may as well give you some matches. Come on over to the courthouse. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Greensport, Missouri, to the home office, Great Plains Guarantee Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the open town matter. Expense account continued. <laughs> Items five and six, 70 cents, a copy of the Greensport Daily Herald and the taxi fare to City Hall. I opened the paper and glanced over the headlines. Murder of police chief still unsolved. City attorney's office claims new evidence. Mayor Lyons demands action. I could feel for the mayor. My client stood to lose $50,000, life insurance payable to the dead police chief's widow, Marty Blake. So I wanted action, too. And I was hoping to get it from city attorney Dave Sherman. Come in, Mr. Dollar. I'll have a seat. Thanks. When did you get in town? Oh, uh, early this afternoon. And you've already met Marty Blake? That figures. Yes, it does. Under the circumstances, her husband has been killed. He carried $50,000 worth of insurance with my company. And Mrs. Blake filed her claim less than 24 hours after his death. So that's why you hot-footed it out here from Hartford, huh? Well, uh, the company figured 24 hours was pretty fast action for a grief-stricken widow. Oh? I don't imagine Marty is grieving too much. No, she's not. She told me that herself. Mm. Marty's about 26 or 7... Ed Blake was in his 50s. Uh-huh. Money, maybe? Well, not until he met her. Then he started to make it. Fast. He had to. That's how Marty likes things. Fast. And then he married her. Well, then she married him. Mm. And now, eight months later, she's a widow. With an insurance claim for $50,000. Well, she said she liked things fast. Why, well, I, uh, I know what you're thinking, Mr. Dollar, but you may as well back up and start all over. You're off on the wrong foot. Well, how do you mean? This killing? Oh, sure, it worked out perfect for her, made to order. A man could build a pretty good case against her, especially with that 24-hour insurance claim. Yes, that would really cinch it with a jury. I pointed that out to her. Uh-huh. Well, I, I figured as much. Would you mind telling me what happened? Well, her first move was to start uh, turning on the charm. <laughs> well, that's one of the easiest things she does, if she thinks it might pay off. And after all, with $50,000 in the office... Sure, did she give you any of the details, of, you know, of the uh, night it happened? It uh, bored her to death to even talk about it. Uh -huh. And you thought she was putting on an act to uh, maybe throw you off? What would you think? Oh, she wasn't, Mr. Dollar, any more than she was sorry that Ed Blake was murdered. Then she's pretty cold-blooded. Well, that's a moot question. Figuratively, yes, I suppose she is. See, she used to be a dancer. Never good enough to make the big time, so she had to, well... I live by her wits and her charm. But uh, you pointed out things that could look pretty black for her if the case ever got to court. That's right. Huh? What happened? She sent me to you. Why? So I could tell you she didn't kill him. Well, it adds up, Mr. Sherman. Yeah, I know. It was late at night, the two of them alone in the house, her husband shot to death with his own gun. I know, Mr. Dollar, but not by her. Why not? That story about the mysterious prowler has been used before over and over. Matter of fact, I broke one of them not six months ago. Mm -hmm. But in this case, it's true. How do you know? Because you were wrong on one point. They weren't alone in the house. Well, what do you mean? Who else was there? I was. 
Oh, I see. Hmm. She's as pure as the driven snow. Well, at least so far as Blake's murder is concerned. Yeah, kind of a neat setup, isn't it? Huh? Instead of prosecuting attorney, you're the star witness for the defense. Mm, yes, I... I suppose if it came to that, I'd have to be. I was there when it happened. So that's why she sent me to you, so I could hear it straight from the horse's mouth. That's about it. Well, she couldn't have a much better alibi than the city attorney himself. Thank you. Well, she's in the clear, Mr. Dollar. Well, how did you happen to be there at 2 o'clock in the morning? I was spending the night. Ed and I were planning to leave early on a fishing trip. Oh, I see. Like to tell me all about it? Certainly. Certainly we'd uh, all gone to bed around midnight. It was uh, oh, a few minutes before 2, I woke up. I heard Marty and Ed out in the hall just outside my room. I opened my door, and just then Marty snapped on the hall lights. A second later, the shots blasted downstairs, five quick ones. Where was she standing at the time? By the door of her room, not ten feet away from me. So you see, Mr. Dollar, she couldn't have done it. Uh, so, that's that. She can thank her lucky stars you were there. Oh, Marty's always been lucky. Have you known her a long time? Three or four years. Ever since she came here to Greensport. You and Blake were pretty good friends, I suppose, huh? No. No, as a matter of fact, we didn't have too much use for each other. Oh, Oh, I know it doesn't make sense, going fishing together and spending the night in his home, but... Well, I know what you're thinking, Mr. Dollar. Do you? Yes, you're thinking maybe I need an alibi as much as Marty does. Well, it is that kind of an alibi. It works equally well for either of you two. Yeah, only I don't need an alibi. Blake and I had our little differences, that's true, but they weren't serious enough to be a motive for killing him. Maybe Marty herself could be a motive. In what way? How old are you, Mr. Sherman? 33. Why? And Marty Blake is 27. And a beautiful girl. Her husband was around 52, I believe. <laughs> Wrong guess again, Mr. Dollar. I've known her too long, and what's more important, I know her too well. Meaning? Well, sure, she's a knockout. Uh, I was nuts about her once. She's a... Uh, ah, summer night. Wild honeysuckle and a handful of stars. But there's one great big catch to it. And that is? She's got a built-in jukebox hidden way inside of her. And when you put in money, it plays real pretty music. When you don't, nothing. Ed Blake found out. And still went on putting in money? Yeah, he liked the music. And that's why he got mixed up in the rackets. Uh, police chief's salary was... Well, well, Mr. Dollar, you do get around, don't you? Was Blake running them or just taking orders? Now, what makes you think there are any rackets here? Maybe it was just a guess. Oh, who told you about them? <laughs> it's funny, I can't seem to remember at the moment. I just bet you can't. Suppose you answer my question, Mr. Sherman. Who's behind the rackets here in Greensport? Ah, just a minute. Who did Blake get his said... orders from? Or was he the one who gave now, the orders? Now, wait a minute, Mr. Dollar. Just take it easy. I'll... Dave, I wonder if you'd mind going over that report on... Oh, uh, sorry, I didn't know you had... No, that's all right, Will. Come on in. This is Johnny Dollar. Mr. Dollar, it's Mayor Lyons. Uh, Mr. Mr. Dollar? Mr. Dollar's an insurance investigator, Will. He's here to look into Ed Blake's death. Terrible tragedy, Mr. Dollar. We'll appreciate all the help you can give us. Well, so far, Mayor, I'm afraid that doesn't amount to very much. The only theory I had just blew up in my face. Oh? What was this theory? Well, Mr. Dollar suspected Marty Blake of the killing. Well, Dave, didn't you tell him that you... Yes, were... yes, he told me, Mayor. That's when it blew up in my face. Well, at various times in the past, Mrs. Blake might have been, uh, as one might say, a bit indiscreet. But to consider her capable of cold-blooded murder is utterly unthinkable, sir. Particularly when she was standing just ten feet away from the city attorney at the time. Well, yes, that's true, of course. Just what is the official theory on the shooting, gentlemen? Well, at the moment, I'm afraid we haven't any... I'll tell you, Mr. Dollar. When we find Shorty Wells, we'll have the killer. Shorty Wells? A local hoodlum. Blake got him sent up the river a couple of years ago, and Shorty swore that he'd get Blake for it if it was the last thing that he ever did. Oh, well, now that's a fairly common threat, though, for a criminal to make. Yeah, and usually it's nothing but talk. But Shorty was paroled just last week, Mr. Dollar. He was seen around town the morning before the killing. And we haven't been able to locate him since. I see. Wells did it all right. There's not the least doubt in the world. Yeah, it seems to add up, doesn't it? Yes, and we've got every available man on the lookout for him. But so far, no luck. There's not even a trace of him. Tell me something, Mayor. Would Marty Blake know anything about the rackets her husband was tied in with? Rackets? Why, that's the most preposterous well, thing I... Well, it's, it's no use. Mr. Dollar's been talking to somebody, and he's found out that our little city isn't as lily-white as we'd like to pretend. Indeed. It's true, isn't it, Mayor? As I hear it, Greensport is a wide-open town. 
May as well admit it, Will. He knows it already. There's no point in trying to lie about it. All right. It's true, Mr. Dollar. Uh, but it's not wide open, as you put it. But there are rackets, as unpleasant as it may be to admit it. Do you have any idea who's back of them? I wish to heaven I did. What about you, Mr. Sherman? Well, if I had an idea strong enough to talk about, I'd be talking about it in court. What about this Shorty Wells? Was he in on them before Blake sent him to prison? Yes, supposedly, but he wouldn't spill a word about the setup at his trial. Afraid you, maybe, huh? Probably. Wells is the key to this whole thing, Mr. Dollar. The rackets as well as the killing. Find Shorty Wells, and we can wrap this thing up in ten minutes. Then I guess we'd better find him. Standard theory number two, an ex-convict with a grudge. Number one, young, pretty wife, middle-aged husband, big insurance policy hadn't panned out too well. And I wasn't too sold on the second one. It was just too pat somehow. And the fact that Shorty Wells was missing didn't mean much. If I were an ex-con just out of prison and had threatened a man who was later murdered, I'd be missing too. And yet the pat answer was sometimes the right one. Uh, the case was still like the town itself, wide open. I walked out of City Hall, started down the sidewalk toward the taxi stand. I didn't know what move to try next. Technically, of course, I was out of it. Since the beneficiary had an ironclad alibi, she'd get paid regardless of who actually did kill Blake. I didn't pay any attention to the horn the first time, but when it sounded again, I turned to look. She was parked at the curb a few yards away. Marty Blake. I've been waiting for you, Johnny. Have you? Yes. I wanted to talk to you. You didn't earlier. Well, I guess you just rubbed me the wrong way. You weren't very nice to me, you know. Sorry. You've talked to Dave Sherman, I suppose. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. He gives you an airtight alibi. Why didn't you tell me he was there that night when I talked with you this afternoon? I might have. If you'd been nicer to me. Oh, I see. You'd have checked it with him anyway. Yeah, I suppose I would have at that. Well, now that you know I'm not a murderess... Maybe we can get to be friends, Johnny. You think so? You're still not being very nice. I am always politely respectful toward new widows, Mrs. Blake. At least until after the first week. I told you I didn't care about Ed. Who do you care about, besides yourself? Shorty Wells, by any chance? Shorty Wells? Who told you that? And you know him, huh? Of course I know him. He is, I used to know him. Where is he now? How should I know what are you trying to pull? If you think for one minute that you're... Get down, quick. Are you all right, Mrs. Blake? Yes, I guess so. There are shots. Johnny, somebody was trying to kill you. How do you know it was me they were shooting at? What? Maybe they were out to kill you, Mrs. Blake. Now here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, an old flame and a new one, and two men get burned. One becomes an alcoholic, the other a human torch. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. Mm -hmm.